Good morning. Uh, we've had a little discussion and argument, uh, not argument, but discussion. Uh, this morning's Mass is for uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Noe or No. It's N-O-E, so uh, one says no, one says Noe, so I'm not quite sure, but God knows who this Mass is for. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. Although Moses and Aaron performed various wonders in Pharaoh's presence, the Lord made Pharaoh obstinate, and he would not let the children of Israel leave his land. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, Every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and share it, share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to two doorposts in the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat of its roasted flesh with unleavened, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. It shall not be eaten raw or boiled, but roasted whole with its head and shanks and inner organs. None of it must be kept beyond the next morning. Whatever is left over in the morning shall be burned up. This is how you ought to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up 
and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read that David did what David did when he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests could lawfully eat. Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice you would not have condemned these innocent men, for the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath, the Gospel of the Lord. The third commandment, uh, keep holy the Sabbath, was and is uh, observed by observant Jews to this day. And in the book of Deuteronomy, it forbids reaping grain on the Sabbath. And so when the disciples plucked grain on this day, of course the Pharisees were very quick to complain and to condemn. But Jesus' answer is kind of interesting. It's three part. First of all, he gives them a little history lesson. He said, don't you remember when David and his men went in the sanctuary of the temple because they were hungry and ate the bread that was uh, there for sacrifice? And then he said, how about the priests? They work on the Sabbath. And then he said, Basically, what it came down to is my authority. He spoke of his own authority. And in his own authority, what he said was, mercy and compassion outweigh the keeping of some of these liturgical or even legal laws. That is the most basic. The goal of law is to protect the sacred. But the goal can, it also is trumped, I would say, uh, by mercy and forgiveness, especially in the face of human need, whether it's hunger or healing or forgiveness. You know, at times in our church, and we all recognize that, we have become pretty legalistic or can be, and some people take this so uh, strongly upon themselves. 
You know, you hear a lot of the word validity, or it might even boil down to the word count. I don't know how many times somebody has said to me, Father, if I miss a day of a novena, does it count? Or someone might say, and have you probably heard this yourself, uh, my mother was sick and I stayed home uh, to take care of her on Sunday, and I miss Mass. Do I need to go to confession? We all know that we can become very legalistic at times and look upon our relationship with God as being something that is the hallmark of it is law and what you have to do. And I think Jesus very strongly is telling us today that, you know, mercy and compassion in the face of human need is much more important. I mean, not that Jesus couldn't have tough love, and he did at times, and that's important to recognize, but it's probably more important to recognize for most of us um, this whole thing of mercy and compassion. I think it would be good for us, all of us, just today to reflect on where we stand on that, where we stand on what Jesus is saying, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. confidence in God's mercy and love, we present our needs, the needs of our nation, the needs of our world to our loving God. For the gift of unity in the church, that God's laws of love and forgiveness may be in our minds and written upon our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our hearts, in our homes, and in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, for those in special need of prayer, that Jesus may comfort, strengthen, and give healing to their lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, that they may find comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Daniel Noe, whom we remember in a special way during this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the parish prayer boxes, and for our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we offer all these prayers through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great. And you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered him covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom and to those in sorrow joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first gifts for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, we now celebrate the remote memorial of our redemption. We remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O oh Lord, upon this sacrifice, which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise and to your praise and glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those here present, those gathered before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of Christ and all the dead, whose faith is known to you alone. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints and your kingdom, there with the whole of creation freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Safely offer each other a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.